In this series of videos, I'm going to introduce InfoPath 2010, what it can do, and highlight some key improvements over InfoPath 2007. In this video, I'm going to go through the basics of creating a simple form. If you're familiar with InfoPath 2007, you'll start seeing differences from this opening screen. You get all the options for creating a new form that you'll be used to. But the layout is different, and we also get these popular form templates options and some clear options for creating template parts. There's also the option to create an InfoPath 2007 template in case some other users are still using the previous version of Office. For this demo, I'll start with a blank form. As you'd probably expect, the body of the form is blank. It just has these placeholders for title and content. I'll enter a title. You may have noticed that when I clicked into the form, this new tab appeared at the top of the screen. InfoPath 2010 now uses contextual menus. Because I've clicked into a table, I've got table controls. I can use these buttons to change the layout of the form so I can arrange the content however I choose. These draw table and arrays buttons allow me to very quickly create a flexible table structure. Let's assume that this is the table layout I want. Now it's time to start entering the fields so that users can enter information. After all, that's what a form is for. On the Home tab, there is the box listing controls. Some of these controls will be familiar if you've used InfoPath 2007, such as the text box, the drop-down list box, repeating tables, other controls are new. For example, there's a picture button, external item picker, and a person and group picker. The integration between InfoPath and SharePoint is much improved. If you publish this form to SharePoint, this control will access the user and group information on the SharePoint deployment. I can add controls to the form, and then I can move them around. When I put a control in the form, an equivalent field is created in this list down the side. This list is known as the schema. It describes the data that's stored in the form. Using the Control Tools tab, I can change the properties of the control. I can give fields a more meaningful name for analysis and later use of the data. If I want, I can add a field directly to the schema. I could now use this field as part of calculations or rules that change how the form behaves without showing the field to end users. I'll also stick a button into this form. I want this button to associate with an action. I'll choose Submit. As with InfoPath 2007, there's a simple wizard that I can use to create a rule that will send a filled out form to a SharePoint document library. So there I've created a very simple form. Now I need to put it somewhere that users can fill it out. When I click on the File tab, there's this obvious button, Quick Publish. The first time you create an InfoPath form, you need to choose settings for where you will publish it to. In InfoPath 2007, 
you would have to go through the whole published wizard every time you made a minor change. Now you only have to do it once. The wizard is very similar to InfoPath 2007. You choose the location of the SharePoint site and whether to publish it to a new library. Then we get this option to promote fields out of InfoPath. This allows form data to be used by SharePoint as metadata or workflow variables. We also have this option to set input and output parameters, but that's a subject for another introduction video. Now, all I have to do is click Publish, and my new InfoPath 2010 form is ready to be filled out.